Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the honor and the privilege of being able to gather this morning in the name of your Son. And thank you for the promise that he has made to us, that when we gather together in his name, he is here in our midst. And so we thank you that you are here, for it is you that makes this all worthwhile. So we do pray that you would open our hearts and minds to your presence, that you would work in us and through us that which you desire. And so we do say, speak, Lord, your servants are listening. Open our hearts and our minds to you. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we pray. Amen. Please be seated. It is clear from the gospel reading that on a typical Sabbath at the synagogue in in Capernaum, not much normally happened. People came, they were loyal, they were committed. They understood that Shabbat services in the synagogue was an obligation that they were more than happy to fulfill. It identified them as who they were, the people of Israel under the authority, not of Rome, but under God. And that was worth affirming, and it was that which bound them together, that kind of common identity that was celebrated as they gathered together to prayer, to reach out to one another, to care, and to be a community in the midst of Capernaum. But it must have been, in some ways, relatively routine for people to be shocked by what Jesus came and brought them. The words are startling, their response. They were astounded, it says, at his teaching. Not just, oh, that's really interesting. But they were astounded at his teaching. And it wasn't just his content, although it was that. It was the way he spoke, or to probably be more accurate to the scripture. It was the spirit that operated through him in such a way that when the words were spoken, it touched them deeply. It literally caused them to think or feel in a different kind of way. They were astonished not only by what it was that he had to say, but the impact that that had. Jesus came to declare, in fact, something new. He was inviting them into a different kind of relationship with God as he himself was God incarnate. It was shocking, but not shocking in a way that drove them away, interestingly enough. It was actually shocking in a way that drew them. It evoked in them a hunger and a longing for more. And that was only increased by the disturbance, the kind of shocking disturbance that had in the middle of their service. I don't know what it would be like for you if in the midst of your typical Sunday morning sermon, here we have the rector preaching, and all of a sudden somebody walks into the room and he says in a very, very loud and terrifying voice, I know who you are. The ushers would want at that point dial 911. But Jesus recognized that what was happening in that moment was in fact a spiritual confrontation. It was clear that the demon operating through the man, and yes, I really do believe it was a literal demon operating through that human being, speaking in a voice that in fact was not his voice, the human's voice. It was the demon speaking through him, literally challenging Jesus to that territorial authority. The wonder of it is, is that Jesus isn't ruffled by it. He just steps into the same mode that was already apparent in the kind of authority that he used to teach. He just changed and moved that authority directly to confront this demonic power. Jesus rebukes him and says, be silent, come out of him. No histrionics. Nobody screaming for the demon to leave in the name of Jesus. I don't know about you, I've been a part of deliverance services like that, where you often kind of wonder, 
who's the one possessed here? Just because of all of the emotional upheaval that's going on. You don't see that in Jesus. Jesus is clear, he's thoughtful, he's secure. And so he just says very clearly, be silent. In other words, just stop this and come out of him. And it said, the unclean spirit convulsing him, crying with a loud voice, came out of him. And everybody saw it happen. And that only added, for those who had gathered, a heightened sense of this extraordinary amazement. What is this? A new teaching with authority? In other words, there was a melding, you see, of what Jesus said and what Jesus demonstrated. They were of a piece. You have one of the lines in, not this gospel, but in the gospel of John, where Jesus says to those who don't understand who he is, he says, you know, if you won't believe me for my words, then believe me for my work's sake. In other words, one is meant to affirm the other. They are, in fact, both word and, in essence, sign, miracle, one message of who Jesus is and was in the story the Son of God incarnate. You see, the demon was right. We know who you are, the Holy One of God, a phrase used specifically to speak of someone with messianic authority. But Jesus didn't want anything of a kind of ringling brothers Barnum and Bailey exorcism show. He just wanted the demon gone so he could keep going. And that happened. Again, no thunder and lightning. Be quiet, come out, the demon leaves. Tries to keep the spotlight on himself as he causes the man to convulse and to cry out one last breath before he finally makes his exit to have that impact no more. And so the spotlight stays on Jesus the whole time. And it was because of that poise that authority, that kind of clarity, that kind of calm assurance, even in the midst of a demonic confrontation, as well as the clarity of his words, the content of what it was that Jesus preached, all melded together to cause people to go, in essence, we've never seen anything quite like this. And as it says... At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. That means for you and me, in the midst of the upheaval that I'm experiencing, whether that be in my circumstances, whether that be by demonic power, I can trust the fact that when I take all of that to Jesus, even if I am deeply afraid and profoundly emotionally disturbed, I can go to him, and what Jesus is not going to do is play into my histrionics. Instead, what he does, because of who he is, Lord of Lords, he comes in and he speaks peace. He commands the evil to depart. He is the Holy One of God. There is no one higher, and there is no one mightier than him. He is the one in whom has been given all authority, both in heaven and on earth. There is a completion about who we see in Jesus that we see in no other human figure. So that no matter who I am or what it is that I'm enduring, even if I am the demon-possessed man coming into the room, all of that to God is the same. And the invitation that Jesus offers, even to the demon-possessed man, is the same. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see, that's what the possessed man experienced. The demon left. The fear was gone. Because what casts out fear, the scripture says? Not more histrionics, but perfect love. 
casts out fear. And that's in fact what Jesus imparted when he commanded the demon to leave. Perfect love. Because it is that love that only comes from God. That kind of love that is in fact the very nature of God himself that brings peace, that calms the storm, that sets things right, that forgives the sins that is, are within us, the staggering things that we wish were never a part of who we are, and yet still are. <laughs> I read something this week in Twitter, and it says, you know, it's not that we're so much calmer. In fact, things are more difficult now than ever. It's still kind of a freak show inside of us. We just know how to manage it most of the time because we know how to be in control of ourselves. You see, Jesus is the one who can look past all of that outward appearance, see the freak show inside, and and not be terrified by it, not be undone by it, not even particularly shocked. See, he is the one before whom all hearts are open, all desires known, no secrets are hid. He knows everything about who we are, including what I don't know about myself. And he is the one that when he speaks his words of authority, he's not speaking just to the facade. He's going to the very depths of the inner human being inside of us that more often than not is still filled filled with pain and uncertainty, fear, condemnation. Isolation has done some crazy things to us. But in some ways, a part of what it has done, it has caused the fault lines inside of us to come to the surface. And the wonder is, is that even if what emerges is the presence of demonic power, that is still not beyond the peace words of Jesus, the perfect love of Jesus, the power that he exhibits, and the great love that he has for us to extend the healing hand of his mercy and touch even the deepest places within our souls. You see, we prayed at the beginning of the service, hear the supplications of your people and grant in our time your peace. He is the one who, in fact, can impart that. And he is the only one who, in fact, can impart that. For us, all it asks of us is a willingness to extend even a shaking hand into the security of his hand and be led. Even if it's to places that we would rather not go. Because very few of us, in fact, want to face all that is within us. We just rather live in a world that distracts us so we don't so much notice what's there. But Jesus is relentless in his perfect love. If we call ourselves his sons and daughters, he will move heaven and earth to bring in us a kind of inner restoration that we could never ever make for ourselves. He is the one who is not afraid, even though we might be, of the deepest parts of who we are. And he is the one who, even in the most incredible places of darkness, can walk in bringing the authority of his light and speak to the woundedness, to the fear in us, and say, be quiet, peace, and even when necessary, come out. That is the one whom we worship. So I would invite you. In fact, it's more than an invitation. It's a plea. That if there are things that have emerged inside of you, particularly over these last few months, that you know need attention, that you wish were not there, that you find ways to open your heart to him, to create some space in your life for silence, where you can say, Lord, show me, and allow him to show you. 
And you, for you to say, Lord, what would you have me do? And allow him to show you what he would have you do. Who would come into your life to guide you into a deeper place of light and grace? Who would be raised up to pray for you and to stand beside you in the midst of this difficulty? There is nothing stronger than the power of our Lord. That's what the message is. And so, believe me, if we cry out to him, oh Lord, in our time, grant us your peace. The scripture says he is able to run to the cry of the oppressed. He will hear. And I'm here to tell you, he not only hears, he answers. I know. That's what I count on literally every single day of my life. (laughs) If it were not for him, believe me, I'd have no business speaking up here. All of us are in the same boat. All of our righteousness is as filthy rags. All of us are in need of the tender forgiveness and healing mercy of God. It is the demonic power that says, oh, it's really only you. Nobody's as bad as you are. Well, sisters and brothers, welcome to this boat. We're in this one together. But we can be in this together because we know that the one who is the captain of this boat is the one who calms storms, rebukes demonic power, and invites us to know him and to trust him. Peter said one time to Jesus, Lord, where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. And because he does, we can be here. So come in. Let this sermon Sunday not be like just a sort of normal Sunday, unless your normal Sunday is to open your heart deeply to the presence of God. As you enter into the prayers, as you receive the Eucharist, see what God might do even as you say to him, Lord, have mercy, for he does. Let us pray. Gracious God, I thank you. I thank you that we do gather in your presence, that we are not merely here for a routine. We are here to encounter you and to stand with sisters and brothers Lord, manifest who you are in our midst. Open our hearts to that which you desire to work in us, even if the thought of it causes us to be afraid. Move past our fears to your perfect love that we might say again, speak, Lord, your servants are listening. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we pray. Amen.